Hi everybody, welcome to the So Essential vlog. I'm really pleased to bring you today a tutorial about making a certain fit adjustment. So the fit adjustment I'm going to be showing you today is how to make a high round back adjustment. So this is quite a common problem that a lot of people have and you may have it and not realise you have it. I certainly didn't until I started sewing. So a high round back, I've got a high round back and if you can see my back curves towards the top forward and I've also got forward shoulders as well and the two things together are quite common. I mean really my posture should be like that but sadly it's not, it's like that. And what that means is there's more surface area at the top of my back than there is on the average person who would have a nice straight back. Um, so I need to create extra fabric to cover that area of my back Oh, I need to put allow for extra fabric in the back bodice piece to cover the, the that area of my back. Now, telltale signs that you've got this issue are simply by looking at your posture, looking at yourself in a mirror and spotting that curve. But also, one of the things you'll notice is that your clothes, quite often, um, the shoulder seams will be further back than they're supposed to be they'll feel your clothes will feel like they're riding to the back and sometimes feel like they're cutting you at the neck at the front here because they want to slip down your back because there isn't enough fabric there to cover that surface area so if you've got any of those issues it is a it is a common fit problem um, because in this day and age there's a lot of issues with posture thanks to lots of desk work working at computers and sewing as well can have the same impact so if this is an issue you have i'm going to take you through step by step how to make a very very simple adjustment to your pattern piece that will give you that additional fabric and will just make um, your clothes fit so much better than they do otherwise so the equipment that I'm going to be using, I've got my trusty Palmer and Pletch Complete Guide to Fitting book, which is my absolute fitting bible. I love this book, I can't get enough of it. It has been known to live on my bedside table where I sadly reach for it in the evenings and leaf through the pages and educate myself about all things fit. Um, but seriously, it is an excellent, excellent book. I can't recommend it highly enough and it is available on our website. The link to our website is below. I've also got a bodice pattern piece. Um, I've got the front and the back here and a bit of spare tissue that I'm going to be using and I've ironed all of those. I've ironed the creases out of them. I've also got a quilting ruler. This is the ruler I like to use at home. Now, I forgot to bring mine into work today, so this one's out of stock, so I won't be using this, but I just wanted to show you it. Um, because it's a quilting ruler, it's got the grid lines on it. It's got markings for eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch, an inch. And I just find that incredibly useful when I'm altering pattern pieces because it helps me to be very, very accurate. Um, it's also useful for lots of other dressmaking tasks as well, like making bias binding and things like that. Um, so that's what I normally use at home. And then I've just got a simple pair of um, paper scissors, not my beautiful fabric scissors, obviously. And then I've got myself some sellotape as well. At home, I do tend to use scotch tape because you can apply that to the tissue and you can peel it back off again easily. Whereas sellotape, once you've put it on, you're probably not going to get it off again. So um, that's a good tip as well. But I did forget to bring that into work today as well. So they're the bits that I need. I'm going to cut now and I will show you, you'll get a bird's eye view of me as I make the adjustments to the pattern pieces. So here I have the back bodice piece and as I explained I need to create more depth in the back bodice piece, create, give more fabric to cover that larger surface area because of the curve of my back at the top. The way I'm going to do this is by inserting a piece of tissue, slashing the pattern piece and inserting a piece of tissue. Now the first thing you need to do is decide how much you need to insert and the way that you do that is you work out where your normal neckline seam would be, so on most patterns that would be at 5 eighths down from the edge of the pattern piece and you can either try the tissue on or you can make a twirl and just see where that neckline sits and then you measure the distance between where your neckline is actually sitting and where your neckline should be on your body 
most people the difference is anything up to about half an inch so once you know how much wider you need to make the pattern piece what you need to do then is mark the neckline on the pattern piece at 5 8 so I'm just going to say that that is 5 8 there I'm doing it by eye obviously I would um, measure this normally and then just below the neckline or at the neckline you want to draw a line across the pattern piece towards the armhole you also need to mark on here your seam allowance where your armhole seam would be and you want to draw a line across just under the under the neckline across to the armhole seam like so And that is where you're going to slash your pattern piece. I like to use a brightly coloured felt tip can help you with this um, if you need it to be more visible. And then I'm just going to cut across, cut along that line. And that will, and I'm going to cut right up to the armhole seam. I'm not going to cut through it, I'm going to cut to it like so. And then I'm also going to just snip from the other side so that I create a hinge there. And as you can see, I can now move this around. Let me just cut right up to the seam. It's a little bit difficult doing this because I'm trying to do it so that you guys can view it easily. Um, but that has created a hinge then that I can move around and I can insert extra depth there. So for argument's sake, I normally need to insert about half an inch. So I want to insert roughly that much. So all I would do then is get another piece of tissue paper, slide that underneath, and this is what's going to fill the gap for me. I just want to measure again, just to make sure that I've got that right, that that is half an inch. So I can see there at the widest point it's half an inch and then I just want to use my sellotape to secure that and as I mentioned earlier I like to use scotch tape for this normally because scotch tape you can um, actually remove it off your pattern piece and um, put a, reapply it if you get it in the wrong place which is quite handy whereas sellotape's a little bit more permanent but there you can see I've created that extra depth that I need so I just trim off the excess tissue paper there and trim it off at the neckline as well I mean I can actually snip that just underneath there Cut the excess off there as well. Okay, so you can see there I've created that additional bit of fabric, and what that will do is that will raise the neckline to where it's supposed to be. It will also bring the shoulder seam at the neck forward slightly. Um, which is necessary when you've got a high round back um, and that's as simple as it is you just place that pattern piece as normal now on your fabric and cut your fabric out and you've made your high round back adjustment next I'm going to show you how to make a forward shoulder adjustment because that often goes hand in hand with a high round back so you've already moved your shoulder seam forward at the neck end but most people will then also need to move the shoulder seam forward a bit at the armhole end and again this is a really simple adjustment to make um, just look at your look at your arm sideways on look at where the center of your arm your shoulder socket is and that's where your shoulder seam should be sitting measure where the shoulder seam is actually sitting and the distance between the two is however much you need to add on to your pattern piece so for a lot of people i mean it varies obviously between different people but for me for example i know i usually need to add on about a quarter of an inch so i've just got my tissue paper here 
Um, what I want to do is I want to add on a quarter of an inch at this end, at the armhole end, but then I want to taper back to the original point here because I've already moved that forward with my high round back adjustment. So all I need to do, if I just stick that tissue down just to hold it in place, all I need to do then is identify mark a point a quarter of an inch from the normal seam line so there and that's how much I want to add on at the back because I want to bring the shoulder seam forward I'm just going to secure that high round back adjustment a bit more at this end as well just so that the pattern's not moving around okay so I've got a, I've added on a quarter of an inch there and what I want to do now, as I mentioned, is to taper that back to the original point of the shoulder seam at the neck edge. So I'm just going to draw that line along there. And then all I need to do is cut that out. So you can see that these alterations, they might sound scary, they might be intimidating. But actually, when you get down to it and you give them a try, they're really, really simple and straightforward. And I think, you know, for me personally, these adjustments have made the absolute world of difference to fit. And I just can't believe it's kind of annoying because now I realise all of my ready to wear clothes don't fit me properly, uh, which is rather annoying. But um, yeah, it just is, it's so nice when you finally work out these problems and then you actually get things to fit you properly. Um, it's just such a different feeling, you know, that feeling of garments sliding down the back um, and riding up at the front. You, do, you don't realise how annoying it is till you know it's there. So I do apologise if you become very annoyed by those things all of a sudden. But hopefully you can see there, I've just added that quarter of an inch on there to that pattern piece. And then all I need to do is take the front bodice piece and where I've added on at the back, I then need to take off at the front so again you've already bought um, you haven't actually altered that on the front piece um, because your high round back adjustment obviously only affects the back um, but you just need to taper again to a quarter of an inch so all you would do is mark a quarter of an inch on the front there and then you would just want to join that up, line that up with the original point where the seam finishes at the neck edge, like so, I feel like I'm on Blue Peter here, <laughs> and just draw along there, and then that's really simple because you're taking off at the front there, so you can just snip along there. I do apologise for the pattern piece slipping around, but you just snip along there and hey presto your front and your back will match up nicely now your shoulder seam will be moved forward and it should be sitting in the correct position on your body so I hope you all enjoyed my little Blue Peter moment. Hopefully that makes sense for you now and it's given you the confidence if this is an issue that you face to just have a go and try some of these pattern alterations because they are so much simpler than they, they sound and they can seem very intimidating but actually when you get down to it they are pretty straightforward but will make the world of difference. If you're scared about cutting your original pattern pieces, you can always trace your pattern off, have a go, have a play, make your mistakes on a copy, and then when you're confident, transfer it onto the real pattern pieces or just use your trace pieces. Once again, I'll just say that this book is my absolute Bible and I'd highly, highly recommend you get a copy of this if you haven't already and you want to improve the fit of your handmade garments because there are so many different fit um, alterations and step-by-step -step tutorials in here of how to make them so i would definitely um, give that a whirl that's available on our website the link to our website's below as always if you like what you've seen today please like and subscribe and i'll look forward to seeing you next time